get some technical details first. Well, how old are you? I'm uh, 53. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Marshfield. Okay. Uh, married children? Uh, divorced, no children. Okay. Why do you want to serve in this position? Why are you interested in being the sheriff? Um, to um, protect the uh, constitutional rights and civil liberties of the citizens in Porsche County. Is that not happening now? Well, yeah, it's not happening now. You're the news person. You'd know that there are uh, a lot of infringements on our uh, rights that are being perpetrated by the current department. Like, for example, uh, the, the last over the last 10 years, they've been uh, taping inmates at the jail when they talk to their defense attorneys, and then they give it to the district attorney and the judge, and they use it to prosecute are you alleging that's still happening? No, I'm not alleging it's still oh, happening. Oh, okay. I'm alleging that the last 10 years of court cases are basically null and void. Okay. What is your current employment? I'm a teacher. Where do you teach? I'm not actually teaching. I'm on disability from teaching. Um, so I'm actually not working. I haven't taught in a year. I'm on uh, what's called temporary um, full disability. I got attacked by a student and I got beat up pretty bad. I got, I got a, hit a, con hit a concussion, had some fillings knocked out of my, uh, teeth and then I broke an ankle and, uh, twisted a finger and hands. And I just had surgery on my, um, ankle. So I've been on crutches. So I just got out of the cast and just got out of the crutches. But, I'm like quite a ways from going back, so so yeah, I haven't taught in a, in a year. It happened on October 7th of last year. At what school? It was down south in uh, Savannah, uh, Chatham County. Um, my ex-girlfriend got transferred down there okay. uh, to uh, Gulfstream Aerospace. Appleton shut their uh, department down that they were working on the interiors and stuff. They moved it down to Pooler, Georgia. So anyway, I went down there and uh, I took a position uh, teaching and uh, way, very tough school system, very tough. Uh, I was just actually breaking up a um, bullying situation. I was getting involved in trying to redirect a student from bullying another student and then that student turned on me and knock hit me and knock me to the ground hit me some more and like i said i got beat up pretty bad wow there's what? not much you really can do about it you're not a cop you're a teacher so you you know it's like i i kind of just had to kind of take it you know i, I mm -hmm. actually had you know other teachers help pull them off and that kind of thing but i was already pretty well injured by the time i got you know back up what district was that in down there it's called the Chatham County District, Savannah oh, okay. Chatham County. What makes you qualified to serve in a law enforcement position? I'm a citizen of the state, county. What local news sources do you utilize to keep yourself informed? Uh, you're talking like news and that? Uh, like what do we follow for a news source or what? Yeah, what what news outlets do you utilize to to stay informed about the local community? Well, one of them was I I, I had been a subscriber of your paper, um, for the last I don't know year or so. Um, so I I guess I I I read uh, pretty much everything that's out there. I mean the the local newspapers the. Porsche County Gazette, the Stevens Point Journal, okay. uh, Metro Clover. Well, I mean, pretty much everything that's out there I, I look at. Okay. Where did you go to college? What is your degree in? I went to UW Stevens Point and I graduated from the School of Education um, okay. for Sociology, uh, Social Science, Broadfield Social Studies. So and um, history, and I 
also went through the uh, rural and Native American social work program. Yeah, and, that's uh, one of the things I wanted to ask you about. Where Where is that program taught? Where's it taught? Yeah. The, it's in the sociology and social work department in UW Stevens okay. Point. Okay. There's uh, the, the professor that started it, the program, I don't even know if it's still completely there. You know, he, he's retired now. But his, his name was uh, Professor Alton Smart. And uh, he, he, he basically ran and brought in that whole social work department. And uh, a lot of it was run through sociology. And uh, so I, he actually placed me working in child protection. Okay. And I got licensed as a social worker. And I worked as a uh, Indian child welfare social worker. And... Um, like I said, really intense, like you know, welfare checks, and I was working right with law enforcement at the time. So I mean, um, when some if somebody has any idea that uh, you know what kinds of folks are involved in law enforcement, there's a lot of people that just don't necessarily wear a badge, but uh, they do it. I've, I've been actually in this type of public service since right out of high school. I mean, I, my first job was actually working in an acute psych unit. And we dealt with detentions, uh, 5115, suicide, and 5145, uh, alcohol and drug. So, I mean, I've, I've got a long background. I'm 53, and uh, I, since I was 19, I've been working in uh, this this type of work. Okay. Helping profession, I guess. Okay. Helping in... And then I got moved into more education, but it's still the same thing. I still do a lot of the same things. I mean, um, where, where I taught in Stevens Point, I taught at the Alternative School, and I also taught at the, uh, the group home down in Plover there. Okay. And uh, so I, I've been I've worked in special ed, tech ed, I've done all kinds of things. What do you think the Portage County Board of Supervisors has done well for the Sheriff's Office? Uh, I I don't know. There's not a whole lot of continuity. It seems like right now the big uh, discussion is over building a new justice center, building a new jail, courthouse out in the industrial park, whether it should be downtown or whether it should be in the industrial park or whether it should be done at all. I think that's probably one of the big areas. But as far as the county, the... They, they, they kind of put everything on the state. Um, it seems like the county and Lucas both think the state is the one that should be dealing with mental health issues, homelessness, and, uh, you know, that kind of thing. And, uh, that's, you know, it ends up happening where you just have people getting discharged homeless in the street, and then they get picked up, and then they get taken to jail because of something that happened or whatever. So basically we're using our jail as a place to house people with issues like AODA and homelessness and um, mental health issues, and it's just not the appropriate way to deal with that situation. So I guess in that regard, the uh, county is kind of looking to the state to bail them out, and they're really, they're really the one that's responsible. The county is, is who's responsible for the citizens. And as a follow-up, what is the county board doing that's not well, not good for the sheriff's office? Um, I guess I, I guess the main thing is that there's not a lot of I don't know co continuity. They've been going back and forth on this, uh, like the, the jail. Mm -hmm. that, that that's one of the things I've watched very closely, and it's kind of been going on for at least well, it's probably been going on for about a decade now. They've been talking about it. You know, I know mm -hmm. they originally probably about eight years ago when Lucas first got in there. I remember that was. They were going to restore the, the current place. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess I'm kind of of that mind. I, I think that, you know, we're going to be able to use what we have and we don't need to, you know, build a whole new structure. And plus, the other thing would be, I don't think we need to have it in the industrial park. That's like the worst place to have it. So um, that might be a bad thing. If, if there's people, I've, I've been told that the county board is pretty much all in agreement that they need to build a new jail and they need to build it in the industrial park. So something's changed, I guess, in that regard, or maybe it's just taken that long, but I would disagree with them on that. I don't think uh, that's what uh, the people I'm talking to, they do not want that. 
do you believe the sheriff's office should have oversight of emergency management and EMS, and why or why not? Yes, um, they should. Um, basically, the, the sheriff is the last um, the last line of, of all that kind of emergency services. I mean, every, everything that's done in the county that has to do with those types of services, the sheriff is ultimately the elected official that's responsible for it. So by, I know one of the things over the years that a lot of sheriffs have done is they just tried to turn the sheriff into like a job. You know, like where everybody has their jurisdiction, like that's Clover, that's, you know, that's Alton, that's Stevens Point City, you know, that's not how it is. The sheriff is the sheriff of the entire county. So they have to make sure that they are involved in all those things, and it includes EMS services. Okay. You are running as a Republican. So what does being a Republican mean to you? What does a Republican mean to me? I guess um, being a Republican means to me um, being a constitutionalist. Um, over the years, uh, there's been a move in the Republicans to, I guess that's why I engaged probably, you know, I was more of an independent as I kind of grew up. Uh, and I still consider myself an independent, but I'm running Republican. But I, I guess if you're saying, what does it mean to be a Republican? I, I'd say it means to be a, a constitutionalist, somebody that, like from a sheriff's perspective, somebody that protects the constitutional rights of citizens and uh, protects their civil liberties and all the amendments and the Bill of Rights and, and the Constitution, everything in general. They're the, the last person to defend all those rights of the citizens. Should the sheriff remain a partisan position? Why or why not? Yes. Uh, back to what I said before. Um, it seems like there's this movement to try to make it like just whoever's the next person in line from the union becomes the sheriff. Well, that's not what it is. It's an elected official. You know, I mean, more than likely, um, the, the best person would be somebody that's not a part of the union, that's not a part of the department. Um, it should be somebody that's, it's an administrative job. It's a uh, legislative, um, it, you know, it, you know, it, in a sense that it's um, you're the you're sort of the mayor, you know. If, if the uh, county board is the city council, well, the sheriff is the mayor. So I mean, they work together on the budget, and they have to administrate. And uh, you know, just having somebody that's next in line, you know, from the union is actually a conflict of interest because. Then it's just, like I said, over time it decays. It becomes like, oh, you got this jurisdiction and that jurisdiction, and we can't do this and we can't do that. Um, oh, you know, you get a call, oh, the doors are locked at the uh, school board meeting. And the sheriff says, well, that's not our jurisdiction. Well, it is the sheriff's jurisdiction to make sure that open meeting laws are observed. I mean, that's that's the whole point of this. Is, is It's an elected official, so yes, absolutely it should be partisan. To which union does the member, does the sheriff belong? The, 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 the current one? Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know anything about him. I'm just saying that that's, that's the impression. That's what they do. He supports the union. The union wants to build a new jail. They want to increase staff. They want to increase the correction industrial complex in the county. Which union wants that? I... I I just I haven't seen that anywhere so okay well good well then, then then you can write that or whatever I'm just telling you that's what they want well where do I find that information I don't know okay I, don't, I just don't even know where this interview is going it's like I, I, I don't I'm just telling you what the position is of the sheriff's union is they, they have collective bargaining they do bargain and they do support a jail they want a new jail they want to increase correctional staff Okay. That is the ultimate goal of every union, to increase staff and to build buildings to put more staff in. Have you sat down with any department heads at the county level to hear about any county issues? And if so, what issues are most interesting to you? Um, I, I've more or less just contacted them. You know, I've talked to um, Ray Kowski. I've talked to this uh, uh, Lionel 
I've, I've, I've talked to probably one or another of them over the last how many years, but it, um, really more or less just kind of me telling them something, and then they just sort of kind of go back and really, I, I don't feel like there's any kind of uh, engagement. They're going to do what they're going to do. Well, actually, I, I wasn't referring to county board supervisors. I was talking about department heads, like the finance no, director I, or the highway I'm director. I like, coffee with a cop and sat around with all of them. You know, I'm, like the chief, you know, um, he's the department head of the Stevens Point City. I sat down and had breakfast with him okay. and uh, the assistant chief. And uh, I haven't really met with a lot of other people, mostly in just law enforcement. I haven't really met with like the health department or anything like that. I okay. mean, I, I used to know Patty Dreyer pretty well back sure. when, and uh, actually one of my professors back in college was also the director of the health department. Um, escapes me her name, but I, it's just, she was a pretty good, she, I, I had uh, her for about two or three courses. Okay. Um, she was also on the county board, but I, I escapes me what her, what her name is, but okay. she was also the, you know, so yeah, I'm, I'm engaged with the county, but uh, I, um, I'm not a hobnobber. I'm not, you know, just I don't, I don't go around from office to office talking to them. No. Okay. Okay. Then there were a few statements that you made in the League of Women Voters questionnaire. I'd, I'd just like some clarification on. Um, you wrote that the all the department all the deputies in the new department will start with the least forceful meth excuse me i can't even talk today forceful methods when making an arrest we will focus on de-escalation methods and then you go through uh the 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 five degrees of force in your answer those five degrees of force are readily available on the doj's website i'm, I'm just curious did you undergo any training on use of force Did I take a course in law enforcement? I teach law enforcement. I mean, I teach sociology. We, we do units on law enforcement. Who do you teach law enforcement to? The students. Sociology. Criminology is sociology. Sociology is the law enforcement discipline. Okay. Is that at the high school or collegiate level? Well, it, sociology, you actually take it. It's like the first year of college. So, so you that's if you have the um, AP. So like AP sociology or social problems is what it is at SPASH. If you have social problems, you take an AP, that'd be like sociology 101 at UWSP, or else it would be just the regular 12th grade, 11th grade sociology or social problems is actually the, the one they call it. Okay, so you're- but That's the one that you deal with law enforcement, you deal with social work, you deal with all those different um, community jobs that people are um, dealing with social problems. That's why they call it social problems. Okay. Are you familiar with that course? Uh, yeah, I am. Um, but it, it's a high school level course and that's you, you, you've only taught high school? You didn't teach college or, or no, postgraduate? No, I, I taught okay. AP, AP which is college level. Um, okay. Like AP history, they call it APUSH. AP U.S. History. Yeah. And taught that. Actually, I even taught that as a student teacher. Even right off the bat, I taught AP U.S. History. And so um, one of the things that there's been a move to in high schools is they take courses that are good for college credit. And it's a lot of times in social science and science and, you know, the major core subjects. Okay. English or ELA. You also wrote in your responses that the uh, 4th, 5th, 8th, and 14th Amendments all speak very clearly clearly to the use of deadly force and how our department will handle these situations. The new department will treat citizens with dignity and respect. Can you expand on that a little bit? It sounds like you're saying the current department does not use the least forceful methods or treat citizens with dignity and respect. I don't, I don't know what to say to you there. Okay. I, I, I'm just, yeah, I mean, we, we need to te treat citizens with... Dropping a, a person off in the middle of the street and leaving them without knowing where they are and their home is in Wausau is not treating people with dignity and respect. When did that happen? No, that just happened. That was all over the news. 
That just happened. They just had somebody that they discharged from the hospital, was disoriented, and there was many calls that came in, and they're just, oh, just leave him alone, let him walk. He was discharged homeless, and he was confused, and he had Alzheimer's, and his home was in Wassa, and he was just left to his own devices to just wander around downtown Stevens Point. When, uh, th this month, last month, I, um, do you, can you ballpark when? It happened this, it was just since I started this campaign, it was, it was over the summer. Okay. Okay. I'm not making it up. No, no, I'm not suggesting you're making it up, but we, we have to vet everything you, you put so, out there, so I'm just I mean, looking you for the you're, you're ballpark. You're bag for the sheriff, and, and I kind of resent some of the line of this questioning. Actually, the sheriff was hit much harder with questions, well, and I'm, I'm not in the bag for you're anyone. You're saying that I'm implying things. I'm, I'm just giving you now not an implication. I'm telling you something that happened, and you're acting like it didn't happen. It did happen. No, this I'm asking for details so I can verify the information. It's it's okay. just part of it's regular Q&A. You can go through the summer. They had several instances like this. They also had a person that was an inmate uh, from prison and he was a sex offender, and they were just charging him to homeless to the streets. Yep, we did cover that, but at the last minute, they changed their mind, and they forced him to... You know to why they did the... that? Because I made a stink about it. Okay. I was online. I'm the reason that Shanklin and all of them got involved. I started pounding on that. That's where I got 4,700 votes for it, is people know that I mean business. Okay. I'd like to talk about your support of cannabis. You wrote that many of the concerning drugs, I'm sorry, many of the most concerning drugs are prescribed and picked up at the pharmacy. So I'm wondering what qualifies someone to, to make a statement like that? Well, I'm a sociology teacher. I mean, that's what we do. We, we look at situations with like opioids. Okay, so most of the, the prescriptions like I had to take for my surgery, oxycodone, and I like half of it I didn't take because I was so scared because I got such a dreamy good feeling. I, I had all I could do to stop taking it. It's absolutely crazy that that stuff is being dispensed at a pharmacy and getting prescriptions written by a doctor. Because mm -hmm. I had all, like I said, I'm just telling you from experience. Sure. I went through surgery. I had surgery on my ankle and I took oxycodone and I almost took it for life. I mean, it was just like I went through half a bottle and I almost wanted to like get on it for life. Mm -hmm. It was crazy. And that's the, uh, my research is right there, Brandy, myself. I can tell you that cannabis would have lot been a lot better to use than that. Okay. You, for pain. Sure. You also wrote about upholding the First Amendment and you actually write demonstrations will be peaceful. We, as a department, will be encouraging political activism. We will not tolerate any property destruction. We will not tolerate any violence. Do you, what do you mean by that? Do you mean that the department will encourage people to be politically active? Yeah. Okay. I mean, uh, we'll, we encourage them to exercise their First Amendment rights, it's just to be peaceful about it. How can you ensure demonstrations will be peaceful? Well, you, 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 you wouldn't tolerate violence and you wouldn't tolerate uh, property destruction. I mean, basically civil disobedience, that kind of thing. Okay. I mean, that's basically what Martin Luther King did, you know, civil disobedience. Okay. Demonstrations. I mean, how are, they, are you going to, that's the First Amendment. That's how you, re, you know, you redress grievances with the government. You know, this is, Stevens Point is a college town. Let's face it, there's going to be demonstrations. Mm-hmm. There's going to be a lot of them. Like I said, I encourage it, but I don't, I don't, uh, will not, as a sheriff, tolerate any violence or property destruction, anything of that sort. Okay. You know, I mean, it, it, civil disobedience is what, what I would expect from citizens and student citizens of the community. Then, as devil's advocate, why would the department encourage any type of political activism? Well, I'm encouraging political activism with my candidacy. How so? I'm the cannabis candidate. Okay. I mean, my whole my whole uh, approach to this is like we're going to change what we're doing, okay. and that's what eighty three percent of the people voted for in nineteen 
in uh, 2018. 83% of Portage County voted for cannabis. And nothing has been done up until like just this summer. Mm -hmm. Finally, the city council like, you know, lowered it to five bucks or whatever. But it's still being done all over the county. They're still picking people up. They're still sniffing it and taking it. And that's the other thing I'll tell you. Um, we're not going to we're going to be deprioritizing cannabis, so we're not going to spend any time sniffing around to take cannabis from people. But the other thing is, we're going to be doing an audit and find out all the cannabis that's seized. We're going to find out where it went. That's something I wanted to ask you to kind of expand on a little bit. Who is going to do this audit? Who's going to pay for it? How are you going to do the audit? Well, there's got to be a log. There's got to be a log for any, anything that's that's any cannabis that is seized will have to be logged in, and it would be technically evidence. Okay, so the evidence locker, you audit the evidence locker. You make sure that anything is taken, and you, you look for it, and you find out where it, where it is. And what's the purpose of the audit? What's the purpose of what? What, 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 what would the purpose of such an audit be? To find out where it is. Okay. What's been done with it. Okay. In one of your answers about addressing potential threats in the community, you wrote, uh, we will not view any group as extreme. What about the Ku Klux Klan, white nationalists, sovereign citizen movement, the anti-government militias like Posse Comitatus and Three Percenter movements, all of which have been known on the list of extremists by the FBI and the Southern Anti-Poverty Law Center and have been identified in Portage County? Yeah, so you could add to that list the uh, the moms that have been going to the Stevens Point uh, school board meetings that they locked them out of. You would put them on a list of extremists? No, they are on it. They're saying that the, the, the federal government has said that they are terrorists. Who said they were terrorists? That, that's that's been talked about by politicians and at the federal level for a lot for a long time now. That's that's what has been going on. All the moms that have been running for school board and going to meetings and stuff like that. That is what's been talked about. Where in Portage it, County has has they been have they been called extremists here in Portage County? They've been locked out of meetings. They've been standing outside with a locked door in their face, which okay. will not happen when I'm sheriff. I okay. guarantee you that. Okay, and that actually that segues perfectly into my my next question. Okay. You you write that we as a department will press charges against any government bodies in the county that deny access to public meetings. We will observe the open meetings law that have been ignored by the current department. The sheriff's office doesn't have authority to press charges. They can only request charges be filed in the DA's office. And 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 that's as has been happening right now. There have been charges that have been referred, and there's been nothing done about it. When were charges referred to the DA's office? Well, there was, over over the last two years, there's been several instances where uh, the people that are trying to get in aren't able to get into the meeting. And uh, I've even, I've been at some of them myself, but I mean, I've also even watched film of it. There's people been taping it. So okay. I, I know it's happening. Um, yeah, there's been, there's been cases referred to Malevsky back when he was the DA, now he's a judge. So if you want to call him, it's, it's definitely been in there because he sent a letter to the school and it hasn't done nothing. You know, it's, it's, it's just handled in a very political manner. So what I'm saying is there are already charges out there. So yeah, the sheriff can do it because the DA already has been, it's been filed. Any citizen anywhere can file with the DA. The sheriff can, can file with the DA. Okay. So for you to say that the sheriff can't press charges, yes, the sheriff can. Well, they can only request charges be filed with the DA's office. The district attorney's they office... Sure the doors don't... will be open at the, at the meetings. Okay. I can guarantee you that. How would you achieve that? How would I achieve that? Yeah. How would you ensure that the doors are open? Well, for one thing, the... the the police and the sheriff were the ones removing people from the meeting. That would be the opposite. I wouldn't remove people from the meeting. So that's how I would do it, Brandy. Okay. Is I would not remove them. I'd make sure they were in the meeting. 
Okay. So th when they call me to say these people need to leave, then I say no, they're staying. You know, if you want to leave, fine. In the question relating to responding effectively to dangerous mental health situations, you wrote that there has not been any training in dealing with dangerous situations involving citizens with mental health issues. What are you basing that claim on? That is based on what I've seen. I mean, I, I, I've read what Lucas says they've done. It's, it's nothing about what I'm talking about, mental health dealing. If there's any training whatsoever being done, it's wrong training because dropping off a, a person from the Aspirus Clinic or hospital and discharging them to homeless when they live in Wausau and they have Alzheimer's and they're disoriented and they're just wandering around, people are calling and the police are telling them and the sheriff's telling them, just ignore it, he'll be fine. That is anything but training. So whatever training they had, I don't consider it training. You're, you're basing so any training okay. they had is f null and void in my opinion. So if they're saying they had training, it's been wrong, wrong training because you don't do that. That's not dealing with mental health properly. Discharging somebody to homeless to the street as a homeless person when they're disoriented and have Alzheimer's and they live in another county in another city in another county and they're just charging them to a just a street up the road. That is not how you deal with a mental health crisis or situation. How would you have done it differently? Well, for, I, would, I would pursue services. Get the, the person the help they need. For one thing, they would need to go back to Wausau. I would, I mean, you, you don't discharge somebody to the streets of some other town that you don't even live in. I mean, I, I don't know the, where the guy lived or whatever, but I just know that there was calls coming in and this person was out in the street and what they finally did was is was they dealt with it. They actually got services. So that's what I would have done. I would have got services. I wouldn't have done what Lucas did, let the thing happen and then let the people scream and then they do something about it. That's what he that's how he reacts. He does everything in a political manner. You write that the current department has been releasing citizens with mental illness to the streets of Portage County as homeless from institutions like prison, jail, and hospitals. This is a recipe for disaster, and this will not be tolerated once the new department is sworn in. I, I guess, considering that mental illness and homelessness are not crimes, is there a reason these people should not be released from prisons, jails, and hospitals? I, I, what is your proposal for dealing with people who have mental illnesses once they are released from prison, jail, or hospitals? Well, as a sheriff, you, you do the welfare check. You, you make sure that people, that the citizens, you know, your job is to serve and protect the people. So if there's a person that has, you know, um, some kind of mental Ill issue, but in this case it was, I think, um, Alzheimer's or something like that, it sounded like person was disoriented that's this was all even the, the people were writing on it all over the internet and everywhere i saw it like crazy and so people were calling about it and so what they were expecting when they called was you know hey i'm letting you know this is happening so that you can deal with it so if you're implying that we shouldn't do anything or that's not our jurisdiction well that's where this and this is where i'm different than who you support okay so I would deal with it by getting the person the services they need. For clarity, I don't support issues. I don't services. support either candidate. I ask hard questions of every candidate. So this I is don't believe that, uh, well, I don't you are entitled to believe what you want to believe. I'm simply trying to clarify some of the statements that you made. Yeah, you well, write, you're trying to make it sound like it's way out there or something, and you can go ahead and do that. I don't really, you know, it doesn't bother me. You write that you will begin an intensive training program that you will teach personally to ensure that all, all of our deputies have all the knowledge, skills, and abilities required for the safe handling of dangerous situations with citizens that are struggling with mental health issues. Don't deputies, corrections officers, and dispatchers already undergo critical incident management training every year? Uh, like I said, it's an absolute failure if they have. 
what special training or certifications do you have currently that would enable you to bring a better kind of training to the department? It's just my background. So I've been lifelong. I've worked in crisis since the since the day I got out of high school. Okay. That's I, everything I've done ever since I've gotten out of high school has been dealing with crises. Okay. That's that's what what I did when I was 19 years old. Was they would call crisis intervention, and somebody would have a suicide attempt, or they uh, maybe were uh, excessively drunk and maybe. Uh, you know, threaten somebody or so I don't know, whatever it was, it was either alcohol or or um, suicide. Fifty one fifteen was suicide, fifty one forty five was generally alcohol back in that time. This so I'm talking the eighties. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was mostly alcohol. Okay. And that's what I dealt with. I was the one that worked in the kite acute psych unit. When they took the handcuffs off, they discharged them to us. Okay. We cut. We talked to them. We did one to ones with them. We, I mean, like I said, I've, I've got a lifelong long of, of time of experience in it. Not to mention that I'm, being, you know, trained as a social worker too. Okay. What would you have done with? And the I study it. I research it. Like, a, like as a sociologist, I mean, that's what I do. I, I, my, my favorite area is actually criminology, police social work. That's what I study. But do you have any accreditations or degrees or certifications in those fields? Sociology teacher. I mean, that's 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 all. I'm, I'm licensed in sociology. Um, I'm not currently uh, licensed as a social worker, but um, I don't I don't do it anymore. But I, I was licensed when I did it. Okay. What would you have done with the canine dogs that the county to, the sheriff's office currently has? What would I do with them? Yes, would we still use them? I know you've mentioned in the past that you're not a fan of the canine program. Well, they, they sniff for cannabis. We're not going to be doing that, so they're going to have to sniff for some other things. Okay. If they can, if they can sniff for, you know, a body that we're looking for or something like that, I mean, they're, they're, they're not going to be used to sniff cannabis. Okay. For one thing, cannabis, if you sniff it, that dog can't tell the difference between CBD and THC or pretty much you know the, the, the two they, they have no they have no ability to, to know the difference and and one of the biggest problems if you if you do a little research and it sounds like you want to do research you can look up canine dogs they're they're inaccurate that's a problem they're inaccurate would the current employees at the sheriff's office need to reapply for their positions if you're elected to reapply yeah would they no. need to reapply for their jobs no. Okay. Oh, no, they would just have to, all they'd have to do is uh, continue with the department. I mean, I know the whole department supports Lucas. That's just, that's just how it works. But when you have a new sheriff, you know, they would have to, uh, you know, adjust to the new agenda. Mm -hmm. That would be for sure. Otherwise, they'd have to find another place to work. You were an alderman in Marshfield, I think like 08, 09, in there somewhere. Yeah. After that, you ran for assembly in three different districts, 2012 in District 24, which is Ozauki, Washington counties, the Germantown area, District 69 in 2013, which is Clark, Wood, and Marathon counties, and then in 2014, you ran in District 87, which is Sawyer, Rusk counties. So, how can the... 24 is not Ozauki. That's Portage County where you are. You're in the 24th. I'm sorry. I was looking at the wrong map. You are correct. I apologize, yeah, okay, my error. So that's where I am now. I mean, that, that's, I'm, you and I are in the 24th. Tell the, tell the people why they should trust that you're interested in the long-term care of Portage County, just considering you've been active in so many different counties. Well, I own a home up, up, up there. I mean, that, I, I, I own uh, a, a property up there, and so I ran up there back, and this was like 2013, mm -hmm. you know, so... Yeah, that was a long time ago. That was my last question. Is there anything I didn't I don't ask? Live there. I mean, I have, a, I have a vacation property up north in Taylor County, but it is a home. You know, it's a, it's a home. Do you live in Portage County? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, that that's a home that I have. I have two homes. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. That was my last question. Is there anything else you wanted to say? Anything I didn't ask, or any other comments you wanted to make? Um. I don't. I'm, I, 
guess um, I think we've all covered it. I guess, I guess the, the, the main thing uh, I'd like to say is that, uh, you know, change is good. Um, it sounds like uh, from the impression I got from your line of questioning that you don't want to see a change. Well, the fact of the matter is law enforcement, a lot of people do want to see changes. And those are people that signed my papers. Those are people I've been talking to. And there's a lot of people that want something different than it's been going on for the last eight years. You know, they want to see the biggest issue that I get, that I get is actually mental health. Mm -hmm. That is number one. Number two is cannabis. So I'd say one and two, uh, Lucas's doesn't check on either box. I do. But what do you mean box? I'm sorry. What do you mean by box? For the top issues that are people in Portage County are concerned about. Oh, okay. The Got top it. issues are mental health and cannabis, from what I gathered, all the people I talked to. From the very first signature I got, you know, people ask me questions, and they're like, what are you going to do about mental health? I mean, what, I mean um, the, the, the things that have been going on, I mean, you, you know for a fact what I'm talking about when, they, when they're discharging people to the street. You know what's going on. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you should at least be honest with me and say, I do know it. Like, you're not going to vet it. You know as well as I do what, what happened. Okay. It's happened. 